Assalamualaikum and good evening. Okay. Um, today we are going to discuss about rapid pro prototyping. Okay. Uh, Roslan, have you heard of rapid prototyping? No, not at all. Samsia? <laughs> Actually, okay. Rapid prototyping is a group of techniques used to quickly fabricate or a scale a scale model of a part or assembly using three dimensional computer aided design CAD data. Okay, so that is the uh, usual use of rapid prototyping. Okay, in uh, computer CAD or in software engineering and so on. Okay, so stereolithography. Okay, is the first was the first RP technique, rapid prototyping technique. Okay, so uh, it was developed by 3D System of Valencia, okay, California, USA. Okay, and the company was founded in 1986. So rapid prototyping is quite a new way, okay, or uh, methodology or techniques, okay, uh, to be used. Okay, so 1986 is not that um, old. Okay, so yeah, and yeah, so and stereolithography was the first one. Okay, so this is the RP model. Okay, RP model. Okay, so um, uh, this is the typical rapid prototyping model. Okay, so it involves learners. Okay, the main uh, the main um uh function okay or the main um, usage of uh, rapid prototype rapid prototyping is that the here in here okay you can see there is a iteration okay between design prototype and review one part here and there is another part here okay then there is also iteration here okay so yeah, we'll discuss that later okay so uh, it if we are going to use it in uh, ID, instructional design, okay, it will involve learners or subject, subject matter, experts, okay, interacting with prototypes. So it is here, okay. And instructional designers in a continuous review, revision cycle, meaning that there is a cycle here, okay, and these three will. Uh, collaborate or iterate okay with the, with each other okay and here is the development phase also imp develop implement evaluate all iterate together okay going uh, back and forth okay not necessary like this maybe it can go this way as well okay this is uh, a rapid prototyping model based on trip and bicycle Mayor 1990. Okay, so in here, okay, there is part here where we assess needs and analyze content. Okay, if you remember last time in project management, uh, work background structure that we learned last uh, before the semester break. Okay, we also uh, did uh, uh, need analysis. Okay, and content analysis okay so we also set objectives okay and then in rapid prototyping we construct prototype okay this is the design phase construct is the <coughs> design phase okay and then we utilize prototype this is the research part and then we install and maintain system okay this is based on trip and by Curl Mayer. Okay, so they uh, define a model that occur in a rapid prototyping environment. Okay, and then when the prototyping is specifically used as a method uh, for instructional design. Okay, so this can be used in ID instructional design. Okay, whether you are going to use it in classroom, okay, or you are going to use it in the project, you still can use it. Okay. Yes, Beechel or Bicycle or whatever. <laughs> okay. 
by Chuel Mayer maybe okay so the overlapping boxes are meant to represent the fact that the various processes do not occur in a linear fashion okay we go back okay so this one they don't go in linear fashion okay so it can overlap the processes can overlap okay during the uh, we do the project management or we do something or our instructional design it can be overlapped okay oh, sorry in other words the analysis of needs and content depends in part upon the knowledge that is gained by actually building and using a prototype instructional system okay so it depends on what knowledge we gain from the analysis okay from the uh, the need analysis from the content analysis and so on okay so this is another no this is a, the rp process okay so in rp there is still a process okay so for example we gather requirements requirement gathering and definition okay it is the big the uh, need analysis okay and then we have the specification okay what is the specification that we need in our project okay then we design then we implement then we integrate and deployment and then maintenance okay so in project management we can use this process to um to, uh, to develop our project okay not necessarily our project is to produce something if let's say we are going to do the seminar then how are we going to use this uh, ra rapid prototyping process in our seminar okay so not necessarily we can we follow eddy or issue model or the and carry model and so on okay the uh, rapid prototyping process involve first analysis okay we analyze first okay so first we are going to identify the audience okay who are the audience okay if we are going to use this in our seminar project for example so we have to identify the audience for example who who are the participants okay for example teachers pre-service teachers or anybody or lecturers and so on okay and then we analyze identify instructional need okay what are the needs uh, for the participant for the audience okay what do they need okay what are we going to give to them okay and then we identify content to the task level okay so after we know our audience then we identify the instructional needs okay for the seminar we are going to uh, identify okay what uh, workshops that we are going to do okay what um, what are the topics that the keynote speaker uh, need to uh, uh, you know convey during the uh, seminar and then identify content to the task level so what we are going to do okay what are the uh, audience uh, going to do the participants going to do okay and then we go to the design phase okay so then we identify the instructional strategy okay in a seminar what is our uh, instructional strategy okay how are we going to uh, uh, get our seminar to have attendees okay we ha must have instructional strategy what strategy are we going to use okay are we going to use the usual strategy that we that other uh, seminars had done okay or are we going to uh, I uh, use a unique strategy okay and then we write design memo and obtain approval okay so if we are going to invite lecturers or uh, speakers for example so we need to design the memo okay how are we going to uh, approach uh, the keynotes for example we, we uh, encounter a problem just now okay uh, one of the keynotes uh, are not able to attend so how are we going to write a design memo for example we we really need that that person okay he is the the only one that uh, is suitable so how are we going to design the memo and obtain approval okay we must um 
convey the information so that the people know that it is important for them, for him or for her to uh, be the keynote speaker of our seminar. They should know the importance. So how are we going to convey that? Okay, and then write general content outline. Okay, the general content outline in our seminar is the task of co. Okay, doing the website. Okay, so he is going to write the general content outline. Everything need to be done there in the website. Okay, then we design and development. Design and develop. Okay, identify prototype content. So we are going to do a seminar. So what is the prototype content? Okay, maybe what is the event? Okay, what is the uh, agenda? For the seminar, okay, it is not necessary a prototype. When we say prototype, it is not something like this, okay, something that we can hold. But uh, for the seminar, it's something that uh, can be seen, can be arranged, okay. So and then we build prototype, okay. That is where we do, we do the seminar, okay. And then we review, review prototype and freeze design. Okay, when we uh, we already uh, decided that okay, okay, this is the best agenda that we can do. Okay, uh, that there will be no problem problem in uh, doing the agenda and so on. You have considered all the risiko that you are going to encounter during the seminar and so on. Then you say okay, this is the final decision that the committee had uh, decided, and then we freeze. Okay, stop, stop the agenda already stop you already decided then it's the development time okay that the first we complete development what we are going to do okay roslan task roslan task is to do the uh, booklet yes the booklet so the booklet should be the final stage in the final stage we have confirmed everything what we are going to do okay so that is the complete development. Then conduct pilot. Maybe we can do, we should do, or we cannot do. For example, we are going to do a very big seminar. Conduct pilot meaning that we are going to do the pre uh, seminar, or maybe test of open chara prasmian, for example. Okay, the uh, opening ceremony. We need to know what to do and so on. So we need to conduct the pilot first. Okay, and then revise. Okay, during the our pilot test, the opening ceremony, what happened during the uh, opening ceremony? Okay, maybe the time uh, is too short. We have provided too short time. Then we have to revise. Okay, and then finally the seminar, we have to deliver the product. Okay, so although we are using uh, rapid prototyping, okay, Although the title is rapid prototyping, but we still can apply it to a project management. Okay. Okay. So the nature of RP, rapid prototyping, has been regularly used in software engineering. Okay. Always been used in uh, uh, software engineering. But recently, others, including ID, have devised ways to apply these methodologies to their work okay for example the the one that i uh, mentioned earlier okay also used more often with the design of computer based products okay like softwares okay or application apps and so on okay it is also a ve vehicle for designing paper based product can as well okay we can do it as well okay so Rapid prototyping can be used in variety of ways. Okay, it's you who decide how we are going to use it. It is not like uh, we have to follow all the steps in rapid prototyping, but we can use it as a guidelines for our projects. In instructional design, in ID, okay, one way to collaboratively design and develop e-learning content within a project management. Okay, like for example, Samsia, she is doing a PhD. So she can also, she is develop, uh, trying to develop something. Okay, she is developing a, an e learning content. So she can also consider using rapid prototyping in her project. Okay, the good thing about uh, RP is that it is not a linear process. Okay, you can 
uh, uh, use one thing and then you can discard something what of the way and it's up to you how you are going to do it okay it's up to you okay so costway development was primarily a process that requires sponsor endorsement of a design specification before implementation okay so sometimes they use uh, costway development and in rapid prototyping uh, we'll see later that the sponsor endorsement is our client okay it's our client so we need the client endorsement so for example if we are going to do something okay a seminar or a courseware okay the client endorsement is very important rapid prototyping will be the good project management that you can use okay and it also involves the development of a work, working model of an instructional product that is used early in the project okay to assist in the analysis design development and evaluation of an instructional innovation okay meaning that okay if you see here we have analysis design develop and evaluation okay you can uh, recall what you can recall from that you can recall ad ad model okay ad model is uh, within the rapid prototyping model okay it's e within but it is not necessarily linear like the ad but all the component in ad is inside rapid prototyping okay so many view rp methods essentially as a type of formative evaluation that can effectively be used early and repeatedly throughout a project meaning that formative evaluation we evaluate the project all throughout uh, the process of developing the the, pro, uh, the project okay so it is something that involves formative evaluation okay we can evaluate our project within our timeline within the process and so on okay uh, compared to eddy the evaluation part is at the end of the process okay but in ad we still can go back but we go back to analysis we don't go back to development okay okay boturi and friends okay argue that the rapid prototyping model has a positive impact on e-learning project okay uh, and uh, e-learning project team communication okay and then it provides a good basis for effective management of the design and development process okay with specific stress on human factor management okay uh, boturi said that team communication okay so within the team it, it, it provide effective communication and then design and development process okay within design and development process it is very effective meaning we design and we develop during the design and development process rp is very uh, effective the purpose of rp methods is to realize the conceptual structure of the final product okay while not incurring the expense of the full product development cycle okay so the conceptual structure of the final product so in our seminar for example okay the structure of the seminar should be focused on okay how we are going to develop how is uh, the real seminar will be uh, held later on okay what is the process okay what do we expect the outcome from uh, the seminar and so on so it's the structure okay not the end product okay and however in practice these prototypes vary depending on project okay depends on our project if we are doing seminar so what is the uh, end product that we want okay how is the process going on and so on okay so and formats vary depending on the medium and use of the final product okay vary and in some instances the prototype is discarded after use okay while in others it evolves into additional prototypes and ultimately into the final product so uh yes sometimes we just discard whatever we do sometimes okay because we are focusing on process 
Okay, on process. Sometimes when we found that the process is not good or something that uh, there are something uh, not correct during the process. So we just discard whatever we found. Okay, or sometimes we need to reuse or evolve. Okay, we need something more. Okay, then it evolves to additional prototypes, additional things, additional project or whatever. Okay, so there are various prototype formats. Okay, it depends on the project. In here, I, I provide a description of alternative prototype formats. Okay, prototype formats is actually uh, how we, uh, is the format that we use during the prototype process. Okay, have you heard of beta? Yes, beta. Okay, for example, if, like, let's say, uh, Mozilla Firefox, they introduce their new version. Okay, and then they say Mozilla Firefox beta. So, when it is in beta version, it is not fully um, uh, used by everybody, but maybe they choose somebody. Okay, would you like to try the Mozilla Firefox beta version? Okay, and then they invite us. Then we can use the beta version and we, we are going to be the, um, yes, guinea pig, guinea pig, okay, in using the Mozilla Firefox latest version. So that is one of the uh, uh, alternative, alternative prototype formats. Okay, let's see. Okay, so this is a, the disc, a description on alternative prototype formats. Okay, we have... Uh, this is scope visual prototypes and this is the executable prototype meaning that they can use it straight away and this one is uh, they cannot use it straight away scope just uh, within the scope okay so we have alpha prototype typically okay alpha prototype okay it is typically the first version of the prototype that illustrate format navigation content and graphics Okay, and may have some user and computer interactions. Okay, so also known as working format. Okay, a working prototype, sorry. So meaning that it is alpha. Okay, alpha, the first one will be the first version. Okay, so maybe they have something, but not uh, really uh, full, not comprehensive enough. Okay, and then we also have beta prototype. Type. This is the one that we usually use. We usually are uh, being introduced of. Okay, it essentially a finished product that is ready for pilot test. Okay, or research has complete functionality. Okay, meaning that it is ready to be used. Okay, we uh, it is ready, but we need to test whether it is fully function. Maybe there's uh, something wrong when we use it okay the the so the uh, manufacturer or the person who develop that uh, the project or something they will ask okay somebody to test it to use it okay and then we have documentation prototype okay documentation prototype models the complete user documentation okay paper or online okay it model Okay, and then illustrates uh, illustrates formats, graphic and presentation. It's only the documentation. Okay, it shows. Okay, maybe some, uh, for example, manuals, manual. Okay, for example, if you do a manual for uh, a courseware, for example. Okay, so you uh, you just uh, give it to somebody. Okay, or uh, uh, so try, so you uh, ask them to look at the manual and see how they understand to use a system or a courseware according to the manual that you have prepared. So if they test that, okay, I can understand this manual, or uh, then it can be published. Or if they say that the manual is not, not uh, they can't understand certain parts of the manual then you need to revise. So that is the documentation prototype. Okay? And then functional prototype. Demonstrate user and computer interactions. Okay? Maybe synthetically complete or incomplete. Okay? Also known as technical prototype. So maybe complete or not, com not, not complete. So it's functional. Okay? It, 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 it is functional. Okay? It can be used but Maybe sometimes it just uh, halfway through, or maybe it can be used, uh, it is complete. Meaning that if a software, you can use it from A to Z, or maybe it's just A to M. Okay? And then we have
Okay. Generic template. Okay. Generic template prototype. Okay. It is used um, across. Yeah. Sorry. Across multiple units to illustrate content, instructional strategies, media and setting and uh, measurement. Yeah. Measurement tools. Okay. So it is generic. Okay. Um, it uh, maybe you wants to. It, it is quite similar to documentation. Okay, it illustrate uh, the content. Okay, whatever. For example, if you you buy a washing washing machine, for example. Okay, so uh, in the uh, how, it is how to use the washing machine. Okay, but it it uh, illustrate. Okay, part by part. Like uh, compared to documentation, it is a manual. Okay, how to use it uh, in words, but in generic template, it is more to an illustration. Okay, and then pilot prototype content instructors material and content and short module. Okay, uh, uh, short module content for the participants or a pilot. Okay, pre implementation trade or for training sessions. Okay, meaning that like samsia, you are going to do a module. Okay, so for a training session, you need a pilot prototype. Okay, so that uh, the students who is going to use the uh, your courseware for example they know how to do it okay we just test how uh, they are going to use it okay and then we have user interface prototype okay so it it is quite similar to generic it illustrates navigation and flow without complete functionality okay rough cut prototype illustrates labeling convention sequencing okay clarity of the message and pacing in a video tape. Okay, this is just rough cut prototype. Okay, and then we have mock-up prototype. Okay, mock-up. When you uh you use mock-up, it say it, it means that it's only uh, it looks like the same, but it is not the real one. Okay, just a mock-up, just a model. Okay, and then we have rough sequence prototype. Illustrates clarity uh, of images sequenced together in video tape. Okay. That is rough cut. This that is rough sequence. Okay, a bit, a little bit the same, but uh, different how they present. Okay, and then lastly we have technical prototype. Typically, it illustrates usability of the prototype tools and processes processes while developing computer based product. Okay. So also known as functional prototype. Okay, it's quite similar to functional prototypes. Okay, that are the description of the alternative alternative uh, for prototype formats. But I think um, maybe usually we have used this all. Okay, maybe we uh, but we have we didn't know. Okay, what is the terms for the thing that we are we have been using? Okay, so this is the right terms. Okay, why? Okay, why we are using rapid prototyping? Okay, so the first one is to increase effective communication. Okay, why? Because, okay, as I mentioned earlier, in rapid prototyping, the component, uh, they, uh, they, there is uh, an iteration, okay, iteration within the component in rapid prototyping. So, it communicates, okay, from develop to rapid prototyping and so on. Okay, so and to decrease development time, okay, because if uh, we use uh, the sequential AD for example or D and carry for example, so we must use everything, okay. So in here we can discard, discard anything that we don't need during our project management, okay, and then to decrease costly mistakes, okay. So uh, if we found that uh, uh, something is not usable in our project, so we can just discard and it can decrease the cost. Okay, and then to minimize sustaining engineering changes. Okay, and then to extend product lifetime by adding necessary features and eliminating redundant features. Okay, early in the design. So early in the design, we already uh, uh, know that. Okay, we, we discuss uh, with, uh, with our team members and we can uh, know that 
Okay, uh, we, uh, do we need this one? Okay, do we need extra keynote speakers? Do we need uh, uh, food? Okay, so we we are going to get sponsors for food. So we don't need to find sponsor. Uh, we don't need uh, more much more money. Okay, and so on. So so it can extend the product lifetime. Okay, RP methodologies could reduce production time. Okay. The production time. Okay, for example, in our seminar, okay, we don't have much time. We only have one semester to do the seminar. So by using rapid prototyping, we can discard anything we don't want, and then we just follow whatever we need, and we can reduce the uh, the production time. Okay, uh, using working models of the final product early in the project tends to eliminate time-consuming revision later on. Okay, and then design tasks are completed concurrently, okay, rather than sequentially throughout the project. Meaning that, okay, one task already finished, then, okay, stop it, then we go on to another task. Okay, we don't have to think uh, about the task that we have completed. Okay, and then RP methods encourage iterative design. That is one of the important features okay iterative going back and forth okay and based on structured early feedback okay so it is we got early feedback when we got early feedback then we can do uh, much better in our project okay okay rapid prototyping and customer involvement okay earlier i said uh, something about a customer okay so in rapid prototyping the customer feedback is very important okay so if we are going to do something okay our customer will be the first one we need to consider okay so it encourage rp encourage communication between everyone concerned with the effort okay so we are going to have a seminar so everyone is important okay miscommunication will uh, effect for example, the mis miscommunication on the keynote speaker. So, it affects the whole process, the whole uh, uh, arrangement for the seminar. Okay, so customer involvement with RP is at a higher level because of the review of early prototypes that are more easily modified based on customer input. Okay, for example, in the seminar, okay, are we going to consider who is our participant? Yes. So when we consider a part, uh, our participants, should we ask them, okay, what do, do, do they want from a seminar? Okay, we can ask them, okay, what do you think of a seminar? Usually you go to seminar, what do you, uh, what do you want from a seminar? Okay, we can ask them. Uh, and sometimes they can provide good feedback. For example, uh, sometimes I went to a seminar and it was boring because the only the keynote speaker gives something and the keynote speaker were not interesting and so on. Okay, so we can get uh, the participants to give feedback and we rearrange our uh, planning according to what the customer or the participants uh, ideas or their comments or suggestions. Okay, and the working relationships and the interaction among customers and design teams are important aspects in the RP approach. Okay, so very, very important. So if you are going to develop a courseware or a module for students, so you need to interact with them. What are the important things that they want to be included in the courseware? How interactive the courseware is? What is the best module for them? What kind of module? What they want in a module? So you need to have working relationships and interaction with it among customers and the design teams. Customer can be anybody, either lecturer or students or even uh, staff. Okay, they can help you in developing your project. Okay, customers' roles are multifaceted as subject matter experts and users or purchasers of the product. Okay, if let's say you are going to develop a courseware. Okay, uh, if you want to sell it later on, okay, how are you going to, uh, who is going, who are the one you are going to approach, okay, as purchasers or end users? Maybe you are not going to um, 
uh, approach the students. For example, if you are going to develop a courseware for primary school students, okay, they can be uh, the one who tested your uh, courseware, but the end product also need to be analyzed by expert, maybe JPN, for example, maybe university, for example. Okay, so the customers can be the subject matter experts, can be end users or the purchasers. Okay, so you must consider this. Okay, and then customers react to the prototype to provide feedback regarding the design, the instructional activities, and the user interface. Okay, design. Okay, is the design relevant to uh, what they wanted? Okay, and then the instructional activities. Is it suitable? The instructional activities, is it suitable for uh, uh, students or children age 7 to 12? Okay, so they are going to react. And then the user interface. Okay, for example, we are going to design a software for children. Okay, so uh, sometimes because we are already a senior, okay, we can consider ourselves as seniors. So our view of a user interface might not be similar to children. So you must uh, 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 get customers or children's uh, perception on the interface. How, what color uh, are suitable for them? Okay. How did they want uh, the, the interaction uh, in the courseware, for example? So it is very important. Customers are very important in rapid prototyping okay and then and it is anticipated that as financing agents okay customers will express their satisfaction with the product and the processes used okay if the customers financially support the project okay so they will express their satisfaction if not they are going to say Okay, uh, I, I think this uh, courseware is not good. You need to revise. If they're satisfied, then it's okay. We can go on. We can sell the product and so on. Okay, classic versus rapid prototyping. What is classic and what is rapid prototyping? Okay, we have discussed about rapid prototyping just now. Okay, classic ID model. I think you can remember. Eddy model, Ashua model, Dick and Carry model, and Take a linear perspective, okay? Just a linear perspective. For example, ADI or ASSURE, A-S-S-U-R-E, analyze and so on until evaluation. It is a linear from analyze to evaluate, analyze to evaluate, okay? And then structured ID processes and orderly step-by-step uh, -step activity, okay, in classic, there are step-by-step -step activity. You must follow the step. You cannot uh, discard design, for example, or develop, for example. You must follow. Okay? And then, character characterized by a progressive advancement through analysis, design, develop, implementation, and evaluation. Must follow this one. Okay? Cannot skip. The process also includes a cycle of revision for each addition or delivery of the training, okay? A cycle of revision. You can also uh, revise, okay? In uh, classic ID models, you can revise. But the cycle is from analysis, design, development, implementation, and evaluation. And then you must go back to analysis. You cannot go to implementation. You cannot go to the design, okay? You must analysis back what happened, okay? So... Yes, that is classic ID model. Okay, so uh, with, uh, I try cho to choose a one, AD, okay, for example, and versus rapid prototyping. Okay, so AD, it is linear perspective, okay, and structured step by step instructional design process, okay, very structured, okay, and characterized by progression through the ADD, IE. Okay, so this is the characteristic of AD. Okay, although it is classic, although it is linear, but it is uh, any quality information, the instructional designers can work on complete information from the analysis phase, relying on the fact that the instructional context is stable, okay, and there are no unforeseen events. Okay, so 
it is good okay ad is good okay for for example we want to know step by step process so uh, uh, we still can use ad it is not that good okay if no it is not uh, not good okay it is good still good expertise the instructional designer can master the process without errors okay and because it is step by step process so without errors they can master okay first we need to analyze then we need to design then we need to develop okay they can master and all the team members including subject matter experts and stakeholders can give their contribution as required okay still they can give contribution at the right moment and in the clear and ambiguous manner okay clear if in the development process we still can get the uh, um, stakeholders opinion okay we are developing this so what uh, what do you uh, suggest on this development process we can still uh, have the stakeholders or the subject matter experts to give opinion okay okay we see the rapid prototyping it offers non-linear approach okay allows for more instructional flex flexibility okay so it is uh, non-linear okay it can catch problems early in the development stage as users are able to offer immediate feedback okay we ask for users okay uh, opinion early in the stage okay and then rp reduces development time and cost by okay using working models early in the project to eliminate time consuming and revisions later on okay early okay in rp it is always early we don't uh, we don't wait until the development process we don't wait until the evaluation process we can decide early in the stage if we don't need this we just discard okay and completing design tasks at the same time ra rather than sequentially throughout the project okay we can complete any task within uh, you know if the the task need to be done quickly then we do it quickly okay we don't have to wait until at the end of the process and it involves all team members earlier okay it, you must remember in rapid prototyping everything is done earlier in the stage okay and it allows the stakeholders subject matter experts and end users to provide early feedback always early okay so we involve the customers the stakeholders the subject matter experts all uh, being approached early okay not after we evaluate okay so this is the comparison okay between traditional processes and the rapid prototyping process okay so if you see here not very clear okay so the traditional process first analyze okay and uh, also in rapid prototyping we analyze the proposed system okay same okay then uh, in here we have specified requirements then we design the system we develop the system then we release product okay and then here we have much more um, steps that we if we want to include okay so first we have analyzed proposed system then we identify initial customer requirements we identify objects and actions then we put together related objects and actions okay this we have prototype panels get feedback improve prototype code in here we can go back wherever we can do okay and then we convert prototype code to actual code for example okay in here we have customers delighted with the user interface for example okay so we have customers feedback here if they are not delighted with the user interface for example meaning that we have to go back go back okay and then here we have convert prototype code to the actual if the customers already delighted with the user interface then we can go here and then we get feedback again and then we improve the actual code then the process iterate some more then customer delighted with the user interface some more then we can release the product okay so the process here is much more than the classic classic id models okay but you can skip whatever task if we don't need this one until here 
Yes, if the customer already delighted here and they say, okay, this can be released, then we can forget this one. Okay, for example. Okay. My final questions. Okay. As a project manager, would you choose Eddy, okay, or other classic models, or rapid prototyping for your project, and why? Okay, Baskaran, try. I'll choose uh, rapid prototyping model. Why? Uh, it's more uh, <coughs> complete. It's a process. It's very what we call um, uh <coughs> subject oriented. And we can see if any mistake, we can, you know, still can uh, counter the mistakes. Okay, so Baskaran said that uh, we can counter the mistakes early. Okay, so he choose rapid prototyping. Okay, so what about Eddie or any other classic models? Don't you think it is uh, beneficial as well? Hello? Lau, sorry. I think other ad, uh, convention classic model also beneficial, provided the information that we have is sufficient and there's no unforeseen event occur. Then any model or classical model should be added. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, if we compare AD and rapid prototyping, there are advantage and disadvantage for both. Okay. Meaning that sometimes we do need AD. Okay. Because it is structured. Okay, when it is structured, then we have, you know, uh, we know what next, what next. Okay, what is the next thing to do? What is we have to do afterwards? Okay, like, but in rapid prototyping, we don't know. We, you know, uh, we have to do it, and then we, uh, we see the problems, then we make decision whether we are going to uh, uh, go on or we have to go back. Okay, like in Eddy, no, you analyze. Then after you analyze. Then you straight away uh, design, develop. I think this is, uh, you know, uh, an interesting topic because uh, if you, uh, let's say you, you uh, uh, Google rapid prototyping, it will come up with uh, the way to uh, do a software, to develop a software, not in project management. Okay? Modeling. Yeah, 3D modeling and so on. If you Google videos, it will show you how to develop something with acid and so on. Okay? So, it is not towards project management, but it actually can be used in project management. Okay, then thank you very much. <laughs>